What's the scariest paranormal experience you have ever had? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. One night, when I was about 14, I watched the Blair Witch Project on a CRT. And the entire time, I swear I can see people in the background watching the characters. That really freaked me out at the time, and so I was already on edge. Afterwards, when I went to my room, I finished watching TV and sat in my bed looking around and waiting for my eyes adjust to the darkness. After a few minutes, my eyes are completely adjusted and I can see everything in my room, except for the corner on the opposite side of my room. It's just pitch black. And I'm just staring at it, trying to see into it. Then, over the course of a few minutes, it slowly begins to grow. It's getting bigger and bigger, and I'm freaking out. How the hell is a pitch black shadow growing and taking over thing I could already see? As it gets closer, I get this like primal instinct warning me that there's something in the blackness. Eventually, I can even feel an emotion coming from it, this intense dread and anger that's being directed at me. After like 30 minutes of staring at this thing, too terrified to move, it's finally reached all the way across my room and the blackness begins to envelope my bed. That's when I freak out way too hard, grab the remote, and flood the room with light. Not the last thing to happen that night, and not even convinced it was paranormal, but it's about the closest thing that's happened to me outside of some weird stuff that happens in the house I currently live in. When I was 21, there was a huge obsession around a rumored ghost on a motorbike that chased your speeding car on a long stretch of road, Lemon Tree Passage New South Wales Australia. Me and my friends tried speeding along the road multiple times with no ghost experience. One day, we drove there as a joke and pulled over on the side of the road, to see if other people would be speeding along trying to catch a glimpse. From out of nowhere, a single headlight came from the road behind our parked car, and a motorbike sped straight past us. All of us stopped breathing, I remember my eyes watering so fast, and one of the girls in the back of the car screaming from being so scared. The motorbike rider was not an apparition it was a full solid real looking person on a bike. Except the bottom half of the motorbike tires didn't exist, it was like he was floating, but you could see him clearly and hear the exhaust. Not just that, but he disappeared into thin air right in front of us. We were not on drugs or alcohol and half the people in the car did not even believe in paranormal stuff. We cried all the way home and never spoke about it ever again, and to this day, thinking about it makes my heart race and my eyes water. I will forever question if what all of us saw was real. We all saw the same thing, we all saw him disappear. I was in a bad place, housing-wise, and I had bumped into an old acquaintance I haven't seen in a short while after spending the weekend camping in a precarious location. We never really had gotten to know each other past names, general location, and surface interests. Anyways, after hearing my plight, they offered me a place to stay until my housing situation became a bit more, solid. Not wanting to spend another warm winter in the woods, I accepted the offer. It was a small cottage. Ascending a narrow staircase you're on the second floor tightly put together with a large bedroom just off the landing and a smaller bedroom tucked into the right hand corner. The larger room was the parents room. The smallest, the acquaintance. Not much in the room but also not much space. It was big enough to afford one twin-sized bed, a squat dresser, with a 20-inch tube television VCR combo and a lone speaker with an auxiliary cord plugged into the headphone jack of a Sony CD Walkman. There also was a short writing desk with a small two-pane window overlooking the backyard. More importantly, the door to the bedroom wasn't much of a door, but slatted bifold doors. That first night after dinner we caught Lethal Weapon 2 on VCR my friend in their bed, and I on the floor and we passed out. Some time in the middle of the night, there was something coming up the stairs with a heavy foot. Dismissing it, I continued to sleep. Then it sounded again. I stirred noticed the hall light was switched on but dismissed it. Next I heard the bifold doors part I looked and in the opening of the parted doors was a small toddler sized shape. I couldn't dismiss it this time because my friend is the only child. The bifold doors opened wider, and I did my best to dismiss it as a late night hallucination. I hunkered down and at that moment the figure stomped its way into the room and dropped before me. In an attempt to prove it's just a hallucination, I opened my eyes. All I could see was the toddler shape in the darkness and a growing full tooth grin. Suddenly, a cold palm gently pressed on the side of my face. 
The pressure increasing as the shape's hot copper and ink smelling breath hit my nose. The pressure got worse and worse, it was an intense pain. Then, it was morning and I had admittedly wet the floor. My friend asked what happened and I explained the whole thing, still shake. I decided to skip breakfast and spent the time cleaning the carpet. Then the yelling began downstairs. My friend's mother demanded that leave the house immediately without any explanation. A few days later, I'm at the market picking up some materials for my camp, and I see the acquaintance. They apologized for what happened the other night, and explained the ejection. Apparently, unbeknownst to my friend, the mother had a child before them and the child lived in the room we were in. It's where the crib was and all that. Turns out, there was a tragic incident where the child suffocated in the crib. It was never to be discussed outside the mother and father due to obvious reasons, and never to be talked about again. So they had another child, my friend, and carried on with life tucking away the dark secret never to be seen again until I came along. Even to this day, nearly 23 years later, anytime I see the parents they will not acknowledge me in any way up to and including crossing the street. I will forever remember that cold palm crushing down on the right side of my face, that putrid breath and the toddler shape in the doorway lighted by the hallway light. My parents worked a lot when I was kid, so the vast majority of my childhood was spent with my grandparents, in their old house. I was probably about four years old. My grandfather always would play hide and seek with me if I asked, and a lot of other games. But one night in particular, we were playing hide and seek. Their house wasn't terribly big. One time, I had to do the seeking. Obviously, he wouldn't hide in hard to find spots since I was a little kid. But I looked around the house and opened the door to the guest bedroom and saw him there, despite there being no lights on in the room. He was under the quilt on the bed in there. I mean, you couldn't miss it, it was a whole ass human under a blanket, illuminated by the hallway light, it was so obvious. But I run up to it and jump onto the bed, and I don't know, it just lets out air until it's totally flat. I was royally confused, the human shape was just gone. I didn't really understand it, but I got up anyways and continued my hide and seek search. Later found him behind the recliner in the living room. Looking back on, it's really unnerving. It's been about 20 years since that's happened and I still think back on it at least a few times a year. My apartment is crazy haunted, it's got to be. But it's not like a horror movie where like stuff keeps escalating or anything. Stuff will happen and then it'll be quiet for a few days to a few weeks to a few months. And then it starts back up again. When activity spikes, doors will open and close by themselves. I've had my bedroom door slammed right in my face twice. I yelled at one of my cats for knocking a book off the shelf only to realize that the cat wasn't on the shelf. The book was too heavy for him to knock it off anyway, and the book had been thrown at him. We get cold drafts, both cats like to track things going across the room that we can't see. I've desperately checked and looked for bugs sometimes. No bugs, nothing, just empty air. This thing also really likes messing with my wife. It pulls her hair, it growls at her, it scratches her. I've watched something yank her shirt like they grabbed part of it and pulled back. I watched the shirt get stretched. The only time I felt something touch me I think was I was trying to sleep and I felt very clearly this cold hand just press against my back and stay there. It was absolutely chilling. The creepiest thing by far is I saw a legit copy of my wife walk behind me in the mirror. It wasn't her. Apparently since then, my wife has seen a copy of me too. The latest thing that has started to creep me out is our bedroom closet door has started to shake in its frame. It wakes me up and sometimes it lasts for hours. It could be the heat unsettled it and now it doesn't sit right, because sometimes, when I walk towards it to investigate it, it'll stop. I don't know though, I kind of just expect things to happen now. So I was in boarding school. It was lights out, everyone sleeping. I wake up cause I need to use the washroom, so I come down from my top bunk and see Miriam, my classmate on the lower opposite bunk sleeping. As I was approaching the washroom, showers were on your left and toilet right. I see Miriam washing her clothes in a bucket in the shower area. Me shocked, I asked Miriam what are you doing washing clothes at like 3 am in the morning. Miriam looked up and smiled at me, not saying a word. So I confusedly went to the toilet but walking facing Miriam. I use the toilet while still looking at her. Wash my hands and leave, all the while this bitch is just washing clothes, looking at me and smiling. I walk back to my room, 
see Miriam on her bed, same nighty and everything. I don't think much of it, I was tired. Climbed my bunk and off to sleep. Morning came, I asked Miriam why she was washing clothes in the bathroom so early in the morning. She was confused and said she never even went to the toilet last night. I told her what I saw and she immediately started praying and saying God forbid, Nigerians living in Nigeria, very religious. I realized at this point, I had seen a spirit of some sort, so I start to pray seriously. Nigeria has juju, scary stuff happens in that country, you hear stories but this was the first time I ever witnessed something so disturbing. When I was a young girl maybe 13, anytime I went into the bathtubs to shower, I would lock the door whether or not someone was home. One day, I was sitting in the tube, and no one was home. The door knob just started to violently twist and turn and eventually popped open. There was no one standing there, but the door just unlocked itself and popped right open. I nervously put on a towel and started looking to see if maybe my parents were home. No one was there, no car in the driveway. And there was snow all over the ground, and no fresh footprints leading to the entrance. So every now and again and only when I wanted to shower, the door knob would violently twist and turn. Sometimes I would grab it and open it myself to try and catch someone. But every time I did, there was no one there. This got old real quick after a few months, I stopped giving a damn and would just shout out, just walk through it you pervert. I cursed it out a few times, and eventually, it stopped happening altogether. I will never forget that, and when I told my parents, they just casually said, oh yeah, it's a gin, gin like bathrooms. I'm like what the hell. I was spending my summer at my dad's place. My dad would always leave for work at around 8 p.m. at the time, so I would be left alone with my sister, grandma and older cousin. One night during the first week of April, I suddenly woke up to a wide open bedroom door, maybe my grandma left it open. That's when I saw this woman in a white glowing dress and she had her hair covering her face just like a horror movie. Each time I would blink, she would get gradually closer. And me being the dumbass kid I was, I kept blinking just to check if I was dreaming or imagining stuff. Once she was already at the bottom of my bed, that's when I closed my eyes and forced myself to sleep. For two whole months during our stay in that house, I would wake up during the same time every night and see that woman. At times when I would wake up, I would keep my eyes shut and just try to sleep, but I would hear slow rattling that sounds like small materials inside a metal container or case. When it was time to leave that house because school was coming up, I was so relieved knowing I wouldn't be disturbed by anything paranormal. The scary part about paranormal experiences for me is the silence, it's not like any horror movie. It would be dead silent, and in movies, you would be able to imagine events that could happen that you can anticipate. But when it's real life, you won't be able to think of any possible events, which makes it scarier cause you don't know what would happen. After my divorce in 1999, I was left to manage the ranch on my own. Because I had to buy so much equipment, it was decided that I should become a reserve fire guard to have more money in the bank. We went to work, and in 2001, my daughter arrived. We were all in the kitchen one day and I heard the refrigerator start and then stop. I looked in on the kids and saw they were all still there. I closed the kitchen door so that the kids wouldn't have to stay in the kitchen alone. My daughter said she heard a door slam and the refrigerator door open and shut. She said she just knew that someone had been there because she saw the food move. The refrigerator was an older model, and while the door wouldn't close, it would only close about 10 to 20 degrees, depending on the size of the refrigerator. It would open all the way if you put the door against the refrigerator and shut it. On another occasion, I was walking from the living room into the dining room and I heard a door slam, very quietly. We were all in the kitchen, and the dining room was locked. No one else was home. I turned around and there was no door there. I felt like it was someone trying to scare me. I looked and saw that the door had been closed, but then open again. One day, I was taking a shower, and before I could get finished, I heard the water shut off. I got dressed, and went back to the kitchen to check the water, and it was shut off. I got dressed again, and returned to the kitchen. The water was on. I turned off the water in the kitchen and stepped out of the shower. During sleep, I will occasionally astral project. The first time it happened was when I was a child and didn't know what astral projection was. One night, I just popped out of my body and floated there. Centered in my chest was a silver cord, 
Not knowing what it was my first child instinct was to remove it. A searing burning sensation dissuaded further attempts to remove it. I had a good time and began exploring. Night is weird it looks like day, but with more black. Little orbs fly everywhere, it is pretty cool to see. After taking in the sights, I started to head towards my neighbor's yard when in a flash a large shadow figure appeared right in front of me. Terrified, I felt the cord yank from my body, and I was dragged back into it. In honesty reflecting upon it, the entity wasn't evil. It felt more curious towards the new thing wandering around and came to check it out. Rather than having any hostile intentions. The last time I astral projected it was in a huff as something was in my room as I slept. Rounding around the furniture, I see my grandmother sitting in my rocking chair with a silver serving plate. She was not related to me by blood. She married my grandfather and throughout my entire life I'd known her as grandma. Once my father tried stating she wasn't really grandma as she married his father and wasn't related to us by blood. This was immediately shot down, and it was said she is grandma and the topic is not up for further discussion. Sometimes, you have to lay down the law on these issues. I say this because I think I'm the only one that really remembers her and thinks about her. She was a good woman who made my grandfather happy. She brought our family together for get-togethers, and ensured we stayed in touch. I miss her, but seeing her there had me perplexed. She looked happy to see me and gestured toward the tray. Without the reason to stay outside my body I couldn't fight, the tugging sensation pulling me back in, so I returned to my body. It's nice to see she is doing well. I used to live in this old apartment complex in Hollywood. I never had any problems in the first apartment I lived in. But the second one, I would often wake up and find my apartment filled with gnats or flies. Like I'd wake up, sit up and be swatting at them, and then it was like I really really woke up and they were gone. I'd often lose things only to find them right where I'd been looking. The worst was this large blue tea pitcher I had just bought. I got home from the store and after getting settled, I started looking for it to make tea. Couldn't find it anywhere. I checked my receipt and verified I had actually bought it. I looked everywhere, even stupid places it wouldn't have been. On the third pass coming out of the back bedroom, I saw it sitting in the middle of the living room. It couldn't have been there the whole time because I would have tripped on it, like I had literally stepped in the same spot at least three to four times. One night, not long before I moved, I was sleeping on the couch. I woke up, but you know how you're awake but you don't get up or open your eyes? I heard the buzzing of gnats and didn't want to deal with it immediately. I opened my eyes and the whole apartment was bathed in this cold blue moonlight, and there was an old man standing by the couch, staring at me. There were gnats everywhere. He looked like a hobo. He didn't look angry, just a little sad. We locked eyes and then he turned and walked towards the back bedroom. The gnats went with him and the blue light faded. I couldn't move or breathe for a few seconds. Once I could, I first checked the front door, which was locked. I then went to the back to make sure there wasn't anyone there, which there wasn't. After that, the gnats and flies never returned and I moved soon after, for unrelated reasons. I was 14, and we were living temporarily in a house before moving cities. The house for the most part seemed okay, but the furnace room always gave me weird feelings. Unfortunately for me, it was located directly across from the alcove where me and my little brother had our bunks. One night, I was woken up abruptly from my sleep. Despite not recalling any dreams, I was in a panic state and covered in a cold sweat. I was on my side facing the wall, and I could sense something directly behind me. I couldn't convince myself to roll over to see what. The very thought of it caused my heart to race and every muscle to freeze. I squeezed my eyes shut and willed myself to fall back asleep. Eventually, I was able to drift back under, only to be suddenly snapped back to consciousness. Whatever it was, was still there, directly behind me, ominous, watching me. I couldn't move, I was frozen in place, covered in sweat and shivering. All I could do was face the wall and hope I would fall asleep again. The process repeated a couple more times before I was finally able to stay asleep. A while later, I mentioned it to my brother. He told me the same night he had also woken up, top bunk. He said that he had lifted himself up to look around when a face popped up to look back at him. He hid under the covers and didn't come out until morning. I honestly cannot recall another time in my life where I have experienced such a stark terror. I wasn't ill or having any mental stresses in my day-to-day -day life. It only happened this one time. I got a good one. About five years ago, 
I was living in this apartment with an unused spare bedroom I used for extra storage. It was a bright summer day and a friend and I were both sat down on my couch in living room talking about what we wanted to do that day and get for lunch. As I looked at him while talking, I can see down the hallway behind him as well as the door to the previously mentioned spare room, which was very slightly ajar. Anyway we were chatting about it while also watching some music videos on the TV, so between glancing at him and TV, it literally felt like a horror movie jump scare. I looked at him to say something. Over his shoulder, I could see the ajar door to spare room, which was illuminated by the window in it and bright. But I saw a tall black figure head and hand in the ajar door seemingly looking at me. I like gasped and jumped up and looked at him for a second, then actually ran towards room and burst open door. There was literally nothing there and nothing in the room to replicate it, and the window wasn't positioned to cast shadows that way, super eerie. Made creepier by the fact that my mind was in a good state of mind, not the state where you might expect it to imagine things per se.